Hi, and welcome to your 16th C++ lesson. And in this lesson, we're going to do about random numbers. Okay, so a lot of the time, you're going to want to generate some random numbers for use for, you know, it can be used for a lot of different things. So, the first way of doing this is probably, it's not a very useful way, but it can be used for some things. And it's called repeat random. And basically, I've got it set up here, and it's a really simple program. So, we have IO stream, namespace standard, and in our end main, we're just... Uh, using a see out um, statement, and then we're just seeing seeing out. I'm not sure if that works. Oh well, uh, and we're outputting just the function rand, which, if you didn't know, generates a random number. I think that's pretty obvious. So we're gonna output a random number, and then output another random number on the next line. Then system pause return zero. So if I just debug this, you will see we have 41. And 18,467. Okay, so they seem like pretty random numbers, but let's try running the program again. Ah, we get the same numbers. So they are random numbers. Well, they're not they're not truly random numbers, but we're not going to go into that. They're random numbers, but they stay the same every time you run the program. And that's not always what you want. So that's repeat random, and it's called repeat num random because the number repeats. And the second type of random is a bit more of a random. So we're going to include C time. And basically that's used for time stuff. So if we now create a new variable, we're going to create a time variable. So time underscore T is the type. And we're just going to call the variable T. So that's creating our time variable. We're then going to go time and T. So that's pretty much putting the time in T. And then we're going to set this time that we've got, which is in T, we're going to set that to the random seed. So that basically means it will then generate the, the number relative to the time. So if we now go srand, which is what you used to set the seed, and then we just say T, and then that's set the seed, or the random seed. So then we can just call rand like normal here, and it will use this seed. So if I just save this and debug it. Here we go, we have uh, 32,552 at the top. So if I just debug it again, let's see if we get a different number. 32,578. So the number will slowly increase, or slowly decrease, because it is the time. But um, what you can also do is you can do operations on it. So if we go srand t, we could say srand t times 2 plus 5. So that's now going to do operations. So the random seed is now the time times 2 plus 5. So, you know, actually it would be times 2 and then plus 5. But you know what I mean. So basically you can change the way this srand things works with mathematical calculations and other type of calculations which you can do that to change the seed of the random. Now another useful thing you might want to do is you might want to create a random number within a range. So we're just going to leave the srand at t for now. And we're going to put this random in brackets. And we're going to go rand and I'm going to have a percent sign and then 6. So basically what that means is create a random number which is between uh, I think it's usually between 0 and 5 because basically the max number when you use this is the number you specified minus 1 so it should be between 0 and 5 and then we can do a similar thing here but with some different numbers let's do 11 and then that should generate some different random numbers there you go 0 and 1 <laughs> it's not great but there we go so that is how you create random numbers. We've covered repeat random numbers, so they're the numbers that repeat each time. Time random, so that'll be relative to the time. And remember, you can change the actual seed itself in the srand function. And we've covered how to set the range. Now, there is one thing. When we do not set a range like this... Oops, I messed that up. When we don't set a range like this, we just have a normal rand function. What it'll do is it'll generate a number between 0 and rand max. Now, 
I can't actually remember what mine is off the top of my head, but to find out yours, you'll see out rand max. Seems like that. So mine generates a number between 0 and 32,767. So that's the highest number it's going to generate. And that is, so yeah, when you do not specify a range, that is what it will go to. Uh, just in case you want to know. Okay, that's the end of this video. Have a nice day.